Frozen section can be performed for diagnosis or it can be performed for margin analysis. If performed for margin analysis, it is critically important that the surgical margin of that specimen, which will ultimately be face up in the cryostat, be just as flat as possible so that you have literally represented 100% of the surgical margin. This requires skill and practice, and to facilitate this, uh, we at Bradley Products have developed uh, the Davidson CryoCup system. Let me demonstrate that for you. I've taken a different specimen, cut it into three, uh, marked it uh, pretty much as we did before, and now taking specimen number one. This is placed flat in the bottom of the cryo cup. Now the real key to this is to fill the OCT over the specimen and right up to this ledge in the cryo cup, but not over it. <clears throat> this requires a certain amount of practice uh, and a certain number of errors. Trust me on that one. That's filled right up to the ledge. Then using any one of a number of chucks, the chuck is placed down on top of the uh, OCT. Let's go ahead and prepare all three uh, before we bring them for freezing. This is specimen number two. It is laid flat, and the forces between the tissue and the aluminum will help flatten the tissue. Number three. laid flat in the bottom of the cryo cup. The OCT is fills the cup and up to the ring. And in this one I'm going to overfill it uh, and it will show you uh, the problems associated uh, with overfilling <clears throat> and just a small amount. Again, the chuck is placed on top of the OCT like that. This is called the dipper. The cup is placed in the dipper and then the cap is designed to center the chuck so that this whole assembly uh, is perpendicular. This is now dipped into the liquid nitrogen and you want it in long enough to freeze it, uh, but you want to just barely freeze it. And depending how you do it, somewhere between uh, 10 and 20 seconds. My own preference is to freeze for a shorter period of time, but then to leave a little liquid nitrogen uh, in the cup uh, to finish the freezing there. 
Let's go ahead and freeze the second one. Again, it is placed in the dipper, centered with the cap. Dipped in the liquid nitrogen for 10 to 15 seconds. I'm going to leave the third one for last. When it is taken out of the liquid nitrogen, you will not be able to remove it. And so you will either need to let it sit for a second or let it warm for a second. If you choose to do this in a hand, I suggest you glove the hand uh, just to protect your skin. And then when it thaws just a little bit, it will wiggle free and you will end up with a specimen that is perfectly flat as you see here. This is now placed in the cryostat uh, where it is sectioned. The second one has begun to thaw. You can see I had a little bit more OCT and it is spilled around the side. That will make it more difficult to remove. Once this is warmed, you can rock it loose, pull it out, and you can see that the specimen is flat. Now we have the third one, which remember I overfilled. Let's go ahead and dip that. And I'm going to freeze it even a little bit longer, uh, which will make it even more difficult uh, to remove. I can tell you that this is way too long. Uh, and now you can see with too much OCT how it has come over uh, the chuck. Uh, placing more OCT in contact with the cryocup and making removal substantially more difficult. This one will need to warm now for literally 30 to 45 seconds uh, before it will be uh, able to be removed. But once it comes out again, in spite of the fact that we had too much OCT and build up uh, this rim, we get a beautiful flat specimen.